Hello and welcome to a new video about the physical principles of electricity. Today we want to have a deeper look into conductivity of solids. Now we're talking about solid materials, metals, plastics, every, every solid material. And they're behaving different. We know that. You know, sometimes if we touch something where there is current inside, power inside, electric power inside, we die and sometimes not. Yeah, there must be a reason for that. Let's have a look how this is working. So basically, solids are also built of, of atoms. Sometimes these atoms, they are uh, oriented yeah, in a pattern somehow, beautiful pattern. It's crystal crystals, sometimes not. However, we have here some atoms. I draw now like it would be a beautiful crystal pattern. Yeah? Metals are of this type, for instance, even if we don't see it from in our microscopic world. If we would zoom in, you could see a little corns, and these corns are crystals. Actually, and inside a crystal, every atom has its position and so on. Everything is ordered. There are also materials which is now not that ordered. Yeah? Glass is, for instance, something. There's just somehow mixture, yeah? amorph materials. Uh, however, what is always that the, the, those uh, atoms are at fixed places? Because then it would not be solid. If the, if the atoms could change, it would not be solid, right? So the atoms are at fixed places if they are ordered somehow or not that ordered. does not really matter right now. We have atoms. Yeah? And around these atoms, we have, of course, these are the, 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 the nucleus of the, of the atoms. And around of them, we have the electrons. We talked about that. Yeah? So we have here some electrons. And somehow... In a com the combination of the electrons and the atoms and so on, they uh, stick them to each other yeah, due to whatever reason. You learn this in, 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 in chemistry, so on, yeah. different different type of of, of combinations. Some are some are some are better, some are not that bad. The bindings and so on between the atoms, some need other different atoms in between, some not. Uh, this is how this looks like. And now, if we are putting all the stuff in electrical field, huh? so we have an electrical field here, Distributed everywhere. I will not draw it everywhere, but there's electrical field. So on microscopic level, we have here a voltage. You, hmm? what does it mean? There's a force, yeah, a positive force, as a force in direction to the cores, to the to the nucleus, yeah? and a force in the other direction to the surrounding electrons. And now it depends. Um, you know how committed an electron is to its home atom. So if the atoms are, you know, just loosely based at home, yeah, and they are wondrous, uh, and they don't even care, is it that core? Is it that core? Is it that? I can, they can easily change between those, those atoms as long as there are not too many atoms, uh, electrons, other electrons close by and they jump from atom to atom because they are, you know, life is too short to stay at home and so on. If this is happening, if an electron can change easily, rather easily from, through those solid, yeah? then this will do. As, as soon as it feels a force, it will, whoa, yeah? like, like we call it electron gas also. This is typical for, for uh, metals. Yeah? If this is happening, 
this material can conduct electricity very well yeah? because we have the moving charges, yeah? the electron, which can move almost freely, or almost, yeah? or good, say it good, good, uh, through, the, through the solid. Yeah? This thing is called conductor. Here, electrons easily change between atoms. It's a conductor. Huh? On the other hand, there are materials where the, the electrons are really committed, really, really committed to the home atom. You can apply force almost what you want, they will not move. So there is no movement at all, there are no move charges. These materials cannot transport electricity, there is no current possible. If the force is somehow big enough, then you rip out everything. Yeah? So if you apply a lot of voltage, then you will get current. Yeah? This is typical, uh, you know, this is why isolations uh, are usually have a, a certain thickness and so on, and you can only apply uh, a certain amount of, of voltage there, that the electrical field is not too big. So that you prevent getting the isolator, this is how those materials are, are called, the isolator from getting conductive. Yeah? Should be avoided, of course. Yeah? But per se, those materials do not conduct. They are called isolators. Electrons. can not change between atoms. For them, it's not possible. And there is something in between. Yeah? There are materials which are usually isolated. Yeah? Silicium. One example, huh? silicium is not conductive. And then you make it dirty. Huh? So you do some dirt inside. It's not like you're putting it on the ground, stamp a little bit on it, and then that's it. Yeah? Once you make those materials dirty, yeah, they conduct. And you can select how good they are conducting. It depends on how dirty you make them. And this making dirty is not, like said, some dust somewhere. Yeah? It's specifically, specifically replacing atoms inside them with other atoms. Boring atom. Huh? <laughs> so there is the base material, and then you put in other atoms with one electron more or one electron less than the base material, more even, huh? and, and then suddenly you can select how many free uh, charges I have, because every atom I put in adds one charge to the conductivity, one possible moving charge to the conductivity. Because this additional, let's talk about additional electrons, this additional electron is not needed for any binding then there uh, and can travel freely. Uh, and if I do a lot of foreign atoms inside there, then it's a good conductor. If I do less, then it's a not that good conductor. And those materials are called semiconductor.
e a number of atoms is changed each changed atom can provide a movable charge conductivity can be adjusted semiconductor right those are the classes yeah, we usually have and now let's zoom out a little bit yeah, let's say we have somewhere piece of wire We have two positions on this wire, so actually this is that, yeah, but zoomed out, zoomed out. We have two positions at this wire. Here in between, we have our voltage U. And if this is a conductive material, uh, conductor, then we will cause because of this voltage, we have an electrical field and we will cause a current I. And the current I is somehow distributed over the whole area. So here the current I, every, every atom in there, every charge is feeling the force and so it will they will all travel it's like the the whole the whole area of charges is traveling okay so how fast they need to travel depends on how big must the current be yeah? if there's a big current they need to travel faster because then they have more more charges passing by second or i need to have a bigger area then they don't need to be fast so this is now what I'm trying to tell you. If you have a big current, you need a big area. It's like in, in hoses or tubes. If you want to rush a lot of liquid through a tube, yeah, then you need a big diameter. Because otherwise, it would need to flow that, that fast that the internal friction of the liquid is too high and they have a lot of losses. Yeah? Lamina flows and up. Turbulent flows. Here you can think about it's the same. If you have a too narrow channel where a lot of electrons need to pass because they need to be very fast, then the friction is very high. And this is getting hot there. It's really like friction. Yeah? This is getting hot. This is why we can heat with current. We will come to this heating with current. So we have to take care that this, this sheet or this, this slice of, of moving electrons to, is not too, too fast. Yeah? What is a measurement? This is called the, the current density. This is actually the current flowing divided by the cross section A yeah? unit. And bare, bare square, square meter actually, yeah, usual, and bare per square millimeter. We have to take care this current density is not that high, that we have a reasonable, reasonable heating of this material, yeah. And we have around, uh, in copper, yeah, 10 to 15. A pair per square millimeter, then we really should get more, more square millimeters to distribute our current. 
So if we uh, want to transport, I don't know, 10 amperes, then one square millimeter should be enough. Yeah? If we want to use 100 amperes, then one, we use uh, uh, 100 square millimeters. Okay, current density. And now, I just said, okay, there is friction. So those, 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 those things, those, those electrons are not passing that free. They are not passing for free. They are passing easily. So, and if I make now an experiment, and I take a look, here I have the voltage U. Here I have the resulting current flow I. And now I make an experience, experiment and always note uh, which, at which voltage I have which current. So they might, okay, at zero voltage I have zero current. Yeah. At this voltage I have this current. At this voltage, I have this current. At this voltage, I have this current. At this voltage, I have this current. Yeah? And then I will get a relation between current and needed voltage. So the voltage drives the current through this conductive material. In common, this looks like that. Yeah? Not linear, somehow. Yeah? These are usual behaviors of semiconductors. In special cases, it appears that if we have double voltage, so we have here one voltage, if we have the double voltage, then we have here one conductivity, one current, and here double. Double voltage, double current. Then this behavior looks like that. It's linear. Special case. That's the common case here. In special case, yeah, if this is linear, we have a factor. Yeah, so we can tell the voltage U equals the current I multiplied by a factor R. This factor yeah, is called resistance. Resistance of this material. Yeah. Resistance. Yeah. Unit is volt by amp, or we call it One ohm. One ohm. Nothing to do with an Indian uh, relaxing technology. There was a guy called Ohm, uh, and he was. It is. This is named after him. Uh. This is also called Ohm's law. I will mention sometimes that this is important. Ohm's law is important first time. Okay. One ohm. We don't write ohm. We usually write one and then we make this sign. This is a Greek letter. It's a capital omega. Ohm, omega. It's good. Yeah. We know this omega. Yeah. There are watches. <laughs> oh, there are watches and resistance from omega. <laughs> okay. So one ohm. Huh? 
this is this is the so-called resistance and this is Ohm's law. I think now I've talked a lot of conductivity of solid. Next time we look a little bit deeper in this in this resistance. Yeah. Take a little deeper look in the resistance. Uh, from which, from what is this depending? Of course, it's depending from the material and so on, but there are other influences as well. Next time. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.